Welcome to module six, where we will discuss assembling, expanding, and showcasing teaching artifacts in your portfolio. In module three, you worked on your philosophy of teaching statement, which summarizes your core beliefs and goals as a teacher. Your philosophy of teaching truly serves as the heart of your portfolio, but in and of itself, it doesn't amount to a body of your work. To offer a fuller picture of yourself as a language educator, you need to document and show multiple aspects of your teaching in action. You do so by including a wide range of artifacts in your portfolio. An artifact is simply an example of some aspect of your teaching, often something you have created. It is evidence of your instructional practices, impact, or growth. So what types of artifacts do people collect? for their portfolio. Some artifacts are personal in nature and document your individual beliefs, education, and experiences as an educator, all the background and training you bring with you when you step into the classroom. And guess what? If you completed the activities in the preceding modules, you already have a few of these personal artifacts ready for inclusion, namely your philosophy of teaching statement, your CV, and your cover letter samples. Other personal artifacts that teachers may add to their portfolio include teaching awards, letters from students, colleagues, and supervisors speaking of the impact of their teaching, and reflective writings on their teaching. In addition to personal artifacts, a large portion of any portfolio is often filled with artifacts documenting practice in the classroom. They may, for example, include the following teacher-created items, course syllabi, lesson plans, presentation slides used in instruction, descriptions of activities or projects, handouts, tests and quizzes, samples of student work, and even classroom pictures with appropriate permissions received. All of these practice-related artifacts provide a window into what your classroom is like and what your students do and achieve. Finally, some artifacts are tied to your development and contributions as a professional in the field. For example, you may include the presentation slides you created for a workshop or conference paper you gave. You may have publications such as teaching materials, book reviews, textbooks, or journal articles, or perhaps you and some colleagues created a web resource or app for language learning. These show you stretching beyond the classroom and impacting the field and complete the picture. And of course, remember to list these accomplishments in your CV as well. When you think of the personal, practice-related, and professional artifacts you may have, it might quite quickly add up to a lot. That's good. The more documentation, the better and clearer portrait of you as an educator. Just make sure you are collecting all those good examples in one place. Remember the filing cabinet image we discussed in Module 1. And just like any good file cabinet, make sure you group and label alike items and folders so you can easily locate whatever you may be looking for in the future. We recommend, to the extent possible, keeping your artifacts as electronic files and, of course, backing them up so you never lose them. If some of your artifact originals are hard copies, scan them so, again, you have a backup. Electronic files are preferred for many reasons. They are easier to share. If you plan on creating an electronic portfolio on the web, more on that in Module 8, you will need electronic artifacts. Also, most TIPS participants are graduate students and may likely have to move to pursue a job or an advanced degree at another institution. Electronic artifacts are infinitely portable and take up much less space than physical artifacts. One final note. We've been talking about teaching artifacts here, but you should also consider collecting artifacts related to your research, administrative experience, or other skills you may have, such as graphic design. In my own case, since I regularly organize conferences for my NFLRC work, 
I keep copies of conference programs and URLs for conference websites as evidence of the events I've helped produce. We hope this discussion has gotten you thinking of all the possible artifacts you can collect into your burgeoning portfolio. Next, please proceed with the TED-Ed lesson, testing what you've learned in the Think section, finding more resources on artifacts in the Dig Deeper section, and addressing the prompt in the Discuss section. Thanks for listening.